So we wanted to actually hear from young people and hear what they had to say. What are their top priorities in 2018 and beyond? What are their top concerns? The three people I spoke with, they all work at the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce here in D.C., which um, kind of surprised me in some ways because they're conservative in certain ways, like business, Chamber of Commerce, but progressive in other ways. Listen. As we look at the numbers, more and more Hispanics are going to be of voting age. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of go to the stereotypes uh, immediately. People assume that Hispanics only care about immigration. Mm -hmm. Uh, or they assume that they're not eligible to vote, uh, when in fact, most are, are born here or naturalizing and mm -hmm. will be voting yeah. or should be voting because we all should be voting, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering about priorities. Um, yes, we know immigration is a big deal, clearly, but what else? Uh, for me, it's three uh, priorities that I have. It's health care, education, and immigration. Yes, immigration ties in close to me as someone that identifies as someone from the Hispanic Latino population here in the United States, but I think you have to have a really comprehensive, wholesome approach in terms of policy and what changes need to be made in order to ensure that our Hispanic community gets the prosperity it deserves. That's a good point because yeah. when you look at the numbers, I think through Pew, uh, education uh -huh. is the number one issue when you ask Hispanic Americans, yeah. um, what do they want to be prioritized? And I'm guessing it's because many of their families saw an opportunity and said, we want to pursue it. Right, absolutely. I think, as you said before, like Latinos are not a single issue yeah. group, mm -hmm. right? So like, yes, immigration is how we get here. Immigration is a lot of times, you know, the biggest step, right? But like, once you get here, you wanna make sure you have all the other, you know, wonderful things this country has to offer. Wow. A lot of people in the Democratic Party feel like they're being the ultimate ally by supporting abolish ICE. M my opinion is that's probably going to backfire on Democrats if they espouse that. Um, because if they have any hope of getting moderates to their side, and you need moderates and independents to win yeah. general elections, not going to be good for them. What do you think of abolish ICE? I think the general sentiment behind it is that people see a broken immigration system. Mm -hmm. They see what's going on at the border, they see families being ripped apart, babies from their parents and that kind of thing, and they see you know, the ICE badge on people's uniforms when that's happening and they say something needs to happen. Sure. And the issue's so big that we're literally going to the extent of abolish ICE. Me personally, I don't find that as a feasible solution because every nation in the world needs open, secure borders, everyone. I think the issue isn't so much, you know, we need to have open borders. We just need to know who, who's coming in, what's coming in, and then what's flowing out as well, and tied in with that immigration reform through policy work, be able to you know accommodate for people seeking political asylum or security asylum or any of those kinds of things. It kind of is frustrating, I would imagine, to always be boiled down to one issue, especially if it's a false assumption that that is your number one. So yes, immigration is important, but for me personally, uh, mental health is really important. Uh, so not just healthcare, but specifically mental health. You know, it affects the Hispanic community a lot. I think one in five people in general suffer from mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not often a top priority or spoken about unless it's tied into like criminal justice reform. But many uh, Latinos in America do not vote. And, and I wonder, with feeling, I guess, like your own family is affected so intimately yeah. and personally, I wonder why sometimes we see low voter turnout. I can see you have something to say, Karina. <laughs> and what is it? Um, that sometimes when you're a single parent, you know, you're working multiple jobs, right? You don't have the time to physically go to the to the booth and to vote. Uh, a lot of times, states only have you you go one day and one day only. You know, and if something happens, you have an emergency, your kid is sick. You know, it'll stop you from voting. Do you feel like you're going to be up for grabs for either party in the future? Uh, because like the chamber that that you work for professionally is not partisan. I wonder you personally, could you see yourself voting for either party in the future? I first see which candidates' policies most closely align. And that's why Democratic primaries for me are so interesting because that's where the decision taking decision making takes place for me. I also examine across the aisle in the Republican Party what positions they have. What typically. could attract you over to the other side? Um, as long as they're for the same ideals that I am, you know, like I told you before, the priorities in terms of health care, affordable health care for everyone. 
I myself am for the concept of universal health care, for example. So if they advocate for universal <laughs> health care, for higher education, <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for free tuition, for tuition assistance, full ride for people that need it for, to access higher education, mm -hmm. for you know, comprehensive immigration reform that's cognizant of the realities that people face south of the border, many times caused by U.S. intervention. To be honest, I'm not really happy with the Democratic Party at the moment. Um, I'm not okay with this movement of like socialist Democrats. Um, to me personally, I mean, we see what happened in Venezuela, in Cuba. It starts somewhere. Mm -hmm. Socialism turns into it just escalates. And to me personally, that's not something I want to align myself with. But then I look at the flip side, and I'm also not happy with the Republican Party. So. I really am, if when I do vote, I'm really gonna focus on the policies of what you know these stances are, who's advocating, who's actually talking about mental health, who's talking about these issues that are really important to me and you know, regardless of their letter on the end of their names, like it's I wanna see what the policy and what their track records really are, or if they're new, what they really stand for. Some of them more up for grabs than others. By the way, twenty-four to twenty-seven years old in that group, they're so well aware of policies and they are listening for content coming out of Washington and the people they're trying to elect. I thought they were so impressive.